Welcome back to Slides to Clinic. In part 1, we explore the wrist ligaments and now we'll be moving deeper from the carpal bones to the knuckles, unpacking the ligaments that hold these bones together from the knuckles down to the metacarpals. Before we dive in, here is a little cheat code. The ligament names in the hands are super logical. Take for example, the image of the hand presented right in front of us. Now, if you look at this image, you could see the carpal bone along this line and you could see the radius and the ulna. Now, the first thing to always think about is each ligament serves a purpose and the purpose is basically to hold structures together. We have three ligaments here on the screen. So the first one, which is the dorsal intercarpal ligament. The second one, which is the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. And the third one, which is the dorsal distal radiohulnar ligament. First things first, the hand could either have a dorsal part, which is the back side of the hand, or the volar part, which is the front side of the hand. Otherwise, the volar part could also be referred to as the palmar surface. So you could either have a palmar ligament or a dorsal ligament. So from these three ligaments we have here, if we look at the first one, it's a dorsal ligament, which means the ligament at the back of the hand that connects the carpal bones together. Now, if we see this clearly, the ligament does connect the bones of the carpus. Same thing with the second one. The second one, which is the dorsal radiocarpal ligament, it's a ligament at the back side of the hand that connects the radius, which is the radial bone, and the carpal bones. And that is why it is situated down here. And the same logic works for the third one, which connects the radius and the ulna, which is called the distal radio ulna ligament. So there you have it. You don't have to memorize the names of the ligaments of the hand. Just think about the structures that these ligaments connect to or the functions of the ligament. And there you have it. Let's start with the intercarpal ligament. These are the links between the head carpal bones in the hand. And they are grouped into three sets. The four set is the palmar group of ligaments which is situated on the palm side of the hand. And the second one are the dorsal group of ligaments, which is located at the back side of the hand. Then the interosseous group are the ones that actually sit in between the small joint spaces of this carpal bone. Together, these three groups of intercarpal ligaments create a stable carpal joint, and it makes it easy for us to do our critical coordinated wrist movements. The first group of intercarpal ligaments are the palmar ligaments. And these are the ligaments found directly at the palm side or on the volar aspect of the hand. Majority of this ligament fans out from the capitates and they spread across like a spider web into the other carpal bones. They reinforce the volar aspect of the wrist, making it easy to do weight bearing activities and also some activities involving gripping and holding on to heavier objects. Meanwhile, on the back side of the hand, just think about flipping your hand over to the back of the hand. We have the dorsal intercarpal ligament, and these are the ligaments that provide support to the carpal rows. Now, look at all the eight bones stuck within these carpal rows, and we could see the dorsal intercarpal ligament holding on to the carpal rows alone. This ligament doesn't spread out to the wrist or go into the metacarpals. It is very, very much situated within the eight carpal bones. 
and they are very very important in activities that involve lifting extending or also putting weight down on the wrist the third and final group of the intercarpal ligaments remember intercarpal ligaments are just the ligaments that hold the carpal bones together so this final group which is called the interosseous intercarpal ligaments they are the hidden stabilizers of the wrist they are quite deep short and are embedded within the joint capsule now if we look into this diagram which is presented below you could see the proximal rows of the carpal bone and then you see the distal rows of the carpal bone now situated within the proximal rows of the carpal bone you could see two very short and deep rooted ligaments this one holding the scaphoid bone and the lunate bone together and then this small one as well holding the lunate to the trigradrum now these are what the small short and deep interosseous ligaments actually do hold the bones together within its capsule let us have a look at the cross-sectional area or cross-sectional image of the carpal bones from this we could see clearly the two rows of the carpal bone the proximal row which has the scaphoid the lunate and the trichotrum and at the proximal row we could see two main interosseous ligaments holding these bones together the first of them which is the most common is the scapholunate interosseous ligament and the second one is the lunotricheotral interosseous ligament and these two forms the two interosseous ligaments holding the proximal rows of the carpal bone now if we go a little bit further into the distal row we could see there are three main ligaments holding these carpal bones together and remember when we started we had the logic of naming these ligaments of the hand so everything falls in line here the first one is the trapezio trapezoid ligament which is the tt ligament then the second one is the trapezio capitate ligament and the last one is the capital hamate ligament from all this we could see clearly that at the proximal row we have two interosseous ligaments while at the distal row we have three interosseous ligaments holding these eight carpal bones together now this is very very important as many cases of wrist injuries or fall on outstretched hand often result in a damage or an injury to this ligament the most common one is the injury to the scaphoalunate ligament let's move further into the carpometacarpal joint and this is where the distal carpal bones meet with the metacarpals and these joints are actually stabilized by two types of carpometacarpal ligament we have the ones at the dorsal part of the hand which is shown in this diagram directly in front of us and on the other side we also have similar conformation of ligament at the palmar side which stabilizes the joint one notable and important one is the cmc joint which is the joint at the base of the thumb because activities like pinch grip like precision movement like very very important small fiddly things are performed with the help of the thumb this creates a lot of stress and strain to this ligament and sometimes injuries to this ligament or sprain to this ligament could result in a serious impact in day-to-day -day hand functions together all these ligaments we've discussed function has a very strong structure 
to uphold the three main hatches of the hand. As we can see in the first diagram here, the hand has three main arches. The first one is the longitudinal hatch, which goes along a parallel line of the MCPs and it runs from the wrist down to the fingertips. Then we have two transverse arches, one which is the proximal transverse hatch is made by the carpal rose and then the other one which is the distal transverse arches is formed at the MCP joint. These three arches gives our hand its adaptive shape which functions well for gripping, for pinching, for cutting and to very very high level activities like holding dumbbells or grappling onto bars. So, what happens if these ligaments fail or if there is any damage to these ligaments? That's a very big question. Even though these ligaments in many cases are the unsung heroes and people rarely pay attention to them. Because their function is very very key to the stability of the carpal bones, it means that the damage to these ligaments will cause an instability of the carpal bone. Now, if we look at the first x-ray, which is right here at the left side of the screen, there's something which we call the gelula lines. And these are the three lines shown here in red on the x-rays. For a normal x-ray, of anybody with all the good and intact ligament, we expect these carpal bones to be well arranged in this way for us to have a gelular line. However, in some cases where these ligaments might have been injured, especially when they have a complete tear, there is a possibility to have a disruption of these gelular lines. And that will be very, very clear on the x-rays or further imaging. In addition to that, if there is also a damage to this ligament, as we can see here, there is going to be a disjointed carpal rose. And we can all say clearly that this kind of presentation will not only present with pain, it's also going to present with severe carpal instability or in some cases, collapse of the radio ulnar joint. So, this ligament looks very simple, however, their importance cannot be underemphasized. So if they fail in the short form, the arches of the hand will collapse, the grips become very unstable, and you may see conditions like carpal instability, which of all the carpal ligaments, the interosseous carpal ligament, most importantly, the scapholunate ligament might be damaged. So, that's all we have on today's episode of the second part of this hand ligament. That's part two in the bag. Thank you for sticking around. Next time, we'll be completing the series on the ligaments of the hand where we'll be talking about the ligaments at the MCPs and the high P's. We'll also talk about the pulley system, the annular pulley, and the crochet pulley. Until then, like, share, continue to engage, and subscribe to keep learning with Slides to Clinic. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep those hands strong and steady. Bye for now.